take in heaven so bright and see with a glittering crown on my brow. My song shall steal me if ever I loved thee. My Jesus, kiss now. Amen. We love him because he first Think of a man who received from Jesus' abundant love. And I would like for us to, to meditate on the narrative that captures his experience with Jesus. All the three synoptic gospels record. There may be a difference in areas of emphasis, but it's a story of God's compassion to his people when they are in need. Mark 10. This is love in motion. I actually find it interesting there are several narratives that start this way. It says from verse 46, And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind but Tamias, the son of Tamias, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should, not, he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal and said, You son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still commanded him to be called, and they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer. He's calling you. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said to him, What will you that I should do for you? And the blind man said, Unto him, Lord, that I may receive sight. And Jesus said, Go your way. Your faith has made you whole. And immediately his sight, he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. This passage is quick paced. Watch with me when Mark says, and they came to Jericho, and as they left, as if the stop in Jericho didn't matter. It's like Mark is hastening forward, he's fast forwarding the whole narrative to get to a point where he introduces us to a man called the Son of Temis, or the son of the Honorable. But although he's a son of the Honorable and we, we're not given reason why he's the son of the Honorable, for that which he's experiencing right now, the position where he's seated is not a position of honor, it's a position in the margins. He's by the way, highway side. Most of us would be more comfortable being centered rather than being in the margins. Most of us would feel a lot more comfortable, a lot more comforted when we find our place in a place of honor, which in most cases it's in the center rather than being in the margins. Balemias, the son of the Honorable, 
he was left daily by the wayside by those that had sight. They left him there so that he can earn his own living. Uh, the fact that he did not have sight would not make his family decide that he deserves of their care and support. He needed to go and make collections. But the problem is they will leave him by the wayside to bear. They will not stay with him. They will leave him there and pick him up late. And if the elements would be against him, if it were to decide to rain or there will be big gusts of wind, all the dust would rest on Bartimaeus. All the rain will fall on him. Mm -hmm. And he will need to stay put so that his family will be able to find him where they left him. Bartimaeus was a person to be left behind. He was not to be part of the main. He, he was not to be part of the movement. He wasn't to be part of the happening. He needed to stay by the wayside. In fact, he needed to stay there and eat the dust of those that passed by. We know he was begging. And you and I know that beggars get changed from us, from those that care to stop, to pay attention. In fact, when we give them the alms, when we give them the gifts that we give the beggars, we give that kind of a gift that we will not feel that we gave. After giving beggars, we don't feel we have given anything, we miss nothing. So in effect, we give them nothing just to deal, sometimes just to deal with our own conscience. We, we move on as if nothing happened, as if we have just met a nobody. That was Bartimaeus' experience. My brothers and sisters, yes, we may be talking about this blind man by the wayside. But fact of the matter is that many a time, some of us, there comes moments when we feel like this man. We feel left out and left behind. And sometimes we get to a point where we settle to eat dust instead of make dust. We, we, we come to decide that ours is a lot that we will be on a receiving end. We do not get to a point where we see ourselves providing a service to others. We do not get to a point where we see of ourselves as a people of value that can share that which we are wealthy of because we feel we have nothing and sometimes conclude that because we have nothing, we are nothing. So we, we hop along, it's more about existence mm. and wondering how horrible the next day is going to get. Okay. Haven't you met people, you ask them, so how are you? Oh, I'm surviving. Mm. It's a survival mode. As others would say, uh, if they were to describe it, they would say, hey, bro, in closing a ring, don't sing it is a, Mm -hmm. I'm not doing too good. And it is their do daily narrative of their daily experience. It's like life itself has cast them to the margins. Mm. Oh, maybe this is where we pause for a moment and say those of us who were not born yesteryear, we, we remember the time when we, we were made to believe that we will never amount to anything. And systematically, we were placed in the margins. And I pray to God that none of us who have gone through that experience may cause other people to feel they belong to the margins and they can never be centered. Oh, how I pray that, especially us as males, may never participate in placing women in the margins where they are left abandoned and sidelined and made to believe that they do not have 
anything to offer that is worthwhile in life. I need to speak to the women that are here present. You have your place and please take your place. Do not allow any man, and this time I mean any man, to sideline you, take the place that God has designed for you to take. Refuse, if you will, to be marginalized. But what we need to quickly see, if we have time, we will need to mention that our background need not become our foreground. Yeah. Where we come from need not determine where we're going to end. And I propose to us that maybe let us start kicking dust even on our way to arrival, if ever there is an arrival point. Let us make our presence felt in a way that will honor God and help us to leave a legacy behind those that look up to us and those that shall come after us. Bartimaeus was placed in the mountains to eat dust that those that were sighted would make. But I thank God this morning because God will not permit that we do not become gifted in all respect. Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus was blind, but he had insight. He did not have sight, but he had something bigger than sight. I submit to us that he had insight. How do I know that? Although he could not see, he had insights to what he could do and that which he could become. Record says, and when he heard. So although Bartimaeus was blind, but thank God he could hear. Mm. And he used that which he had, that which was in his control and command, to maximize on the deficiencies that he might have suffered. Bartimaeus was blind, but he could see. Rather, he was blind, but he could hear. And when he heard about Jesus, he did something about the input that he just experienced. Fact of the matter is that the, the, the avenue to our spirit or the avenue to our soul is not only through sight. There comes a time when it needs insight more than sight. So Bartimaeus saw that oh, Please promise me you heard. Bartimaeus saw that this was the opportunity not to be missed. Mm. So the blind man saw that this was not a moment to be missed. If Jesus was passing his way, that's what he was doing. He was passing his way. I know that Bartimaeus did not know that this was the last passage that Jesus was making. But you and I know in retrospect that this was his last passage from Jericho to Jerusalem. He was not about to exit Jerusalem. From here, he was going to stop over in Bethany, and from Bethany, he was going to make that triumphal entry into the city, from which he would not come out until he shall have died. So Bartimaeus must have heard the still small voice that whispered unto his soul and said, This is your moment. It's now or never. He must have heard the voice, not only the sound of Jesus uh, passing by, but he must also have heard the voice that says, Time, like time, wait for no man. He must have come to understand that there comes a time when this wave has come and gone. It will never come back again. Oh, another wave may come, but that wave will never come again. That the waters that are flowing past now will never pass this way anymore. So if you need to drink of these particular waters, you better skip scoop of the waters right now before they pass by, for they will not pass this way no more. Many a time, many of us 
have sat by the wayside of life and kept telling ourselves that there will be another chance. That we can let this one go and we can let this pass. We shall always be at HBC. We shall always be here. There shall always be another week of prayer. There shall always be another sermon that shall be preached. There shall always be another moment when the Spirit shall nudge our spirit to make the right decision. And my brothers and sisters, fact of the matter is there is no more blindness worse than that kind of blindness. Okay. I can submit to us this morning that that kind of messages does not come from the throne room. It comes from another place whose temperature is high. I can't call it by its name. I am a preacher. <laughs> So Barimians speaks out. I've heard a few Jesus of Nazareth. I don't have a long speech to give unto you. My prayer is not long. It's simple. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Right now, Lord, as you pass by, this has got to get personal. It's about me and my need. It's about me and my emptiness. It's about me and my lack of sight. But, but Tamias does not go that far. He simply says, have mercy on me. Oh, I can sense that there are many people surrounding you. I don't know about those people. I don't know about their needs. I don't even know where they come from. It could be that even my family is in that throne. Right now, it's about me and my need. You're not going to pass by without meeting my need. Have mercy. In other words, do not treat me as I deserve. Treat me as I do not deserve. Just do it. For me, because you are a merciful God, do it for me because you are a compassionate a God. Your, your, your heart is moved. Mm. Oh, Bartimaeus knew that even though he didn't have the song, does Jesus care? Mm. He knew in his heart of heart that yes, he cared. His heart is touched by his grief. Have mercy on me. Record is quick to tell us that the throne along Jesus spoke with the blind man and they said, hold your peace. Behave now. It doesn't get more mean than this. They are sighted and they can walk without aid. It doesn't need rocket science to know what Bartimaeus will be talking about when he talks about the mercy he needs, not from them, but from the Lord. So they stop him. In essence, what they are saying is, continue to be a beggar. We have seen the miracles he does. We have seen his compassion to us other people. But we are saying right now, we're busy with the Lord. Do not disturb him. Mm. Mm. Your situation does not warrant mm. him stopping mm. and attending to you. Mm. Or may do with the change that we give to you. Do not receive of nothing bigger than that. But record says that when they try to stop him, you know the story, my brothers and sisters. He cried all the more. He increased for him. Mm. Ah, mm. I just like the attitude of this guy. Mm -hmm. So we know, we also know now that not only could he hear, we also know he could talk. Isn't it about time, my brothers and sisters, we stop mourning about what we cannot do and what we cannot be and start celebrating and maximizing our output from that which we can do, mm. from that which we are enabled already and use it to advantage ourselves to compensate as it were in those areas where we are suffering from certain disabilities. Yeah. That we use that which we have and that which we have already become and that which we have 
in control to go and deal with the limitations that we are suffering because of our inabilities in other areas. Mm. But Amen. cries even more, nobody can silence Bartimaeus at this stage. He can sense Jesus is walking past and there will be no other time. Jesus does not respond at the first call. Not because he didn't hear Bartimaeus. But he gives him a chance to know people for what they are. And when Bartimaeus had suffered from their insistence that he must be quiet, that he must not do anything about his situation, then Jesus stops. Now that Bartimaeus knows people, and he says to the people, ah, this is my Lord and Savior. He says to the people, the very ones that silences him, you call him. Jesus could have said, but tell me, come on over here. But he says to the people that said, keep your peace. Go, call him. You're going to be the agency. Ah. The stoppers and the haters. Ah. You're going to be the carriers of the good news. Ah. So you go to the blind man and say to him, the master is calling you. Go to the blind man and say to him, this is your day. Go to the blind man and say to the blind man, the master has stopped. We know you can't see him, but he can see you. And he call it, he's calling for you. These are people, my brothers and sisters, the same voices that were saying, shut up. Watch them say, actually, he's calling you. Oh, I know. I know that if you live in this planet, lady, the same voice that said, what's wrong with you? Remember that day when you were saying no and they asked you, what's wrong with you? Jesus. You do remember that. Moya. <laughs> and then you believe them. Mm. 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 That there must be something wrong with you. Christian? If we were not here, this is where I would say, and you then gave you. Hey. But Mama. we are here. I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Living in 2000 and something, people still get pregnant, and you make that call. Mm. Baby, we need to talk. Christian? Mama. We need to talk. <laughs> There's nothing that a man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like we need to talk. Mm. More, <laughs> Yeah, we can talk. What is it? Hey. No, we need to meet. Momo. <laughs> Not over the phone. What is it that can be spoken about over the phone? Hey. Now that you insist, I'm from the clinic. Yes. <laughs> and now they say, Are you sick? <laughs> What's wrong with you? What were you thinking? <laughs> they say, You can't leave, my brothers and sisters. You can leave your life for people. People are like that. We have already talked about how they an expiry day. That includes the value they place on you. It's got an expiry date. People are like this today, tomorrow they are different. Hey. You can live your life to please them. It's a complete and a serious waste of life. More. And yet some of us, oh, we need to say this before we get out of here, my brothers and sisters. Do you know how people have studied us? 
and they have discovered how we live for others. If you don't believe me, you tell me today, why do we have clothes that have got labels on the outside? Yeah. Yeah. Why must that golf shirt have that emblem here? Why must that golf shirt the one whose collar you must not bend. <laughs> Momo, help the preacher. You're listening to, to the preacher? Yes. Why must they do that? It's because they know even when we buy, we buy to make an impression. No. Even when we dress up, we dress to make an impression. Mm. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, here is the good news. The good news is that there are fake ones. And many of us will not spend time to make a difference. We might just conclude that even the one you are wearing. Hey! <laughs> hey! Uh, Made in China. The other day I walked into people who sell shoes. They, they sold me a beautiful pair of shoes. Um, and when it wore out after a couple of years, I went back to the same guys and I wanted the same shoe. I mean, I'm a man. Uh, I don't have to show that the clothes I'm wearing today are different from yesterday. So I wanted the same pair of shoes. And I found one that looks like it. The first one that I had, styled in ink. And then I find one close to it, also styled in it. But then they didn't have the right size. And you know the guys, yes I go to those kind of shops. Don't worry, I'll get it for you from my other shop. <laughs> cool I don't have time, it's like two minutes. Two minutes boss. Fifteen minutes later, he was back with the same pair, similar pair, except that this one, the label on the foot pad, was made in China. Made in China. <laughs> and I said, no ways! He says, what's the problem? Said, no, no, it's not the same thing. And he says to me, Oh, that is not the problem. Put his hand inside, pulled out the foot pad, and went and got the one styled in Italy and slipped it in in front of me. Now it is easy, I said, I'm Hey! Oh, my sisters. Most of the fashion designers are men. They decide what they want to see. Just thought you should know. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about how Batemians never made a mistake. To be bothered about the opinion of the people around him. Amen. This was his need. Amen. And he was going to make sure his need is met. Oh, yeah. And the same people, oh my brothers and sisters, the same people mm. now are the carriers of the good news and they must be nice to him. Mm. That's what happens. We can't live our lives to please the Jones, or are they the what? They can't be the Jones forever. They are the Mormons. Yes. That standing must change. <coughs> we can live our lives, we can't buy furniture because the neighbors have what furniture. We can't buy a particular piece of a clothing item because it's on fashion. You got to know for yourself what you are up to and have a purpose in life and be sure you live according to the way the Lord has charted your waters. Yeah. Mm. Mm. 
It's a waste to become a copy of somebody else. We've been told that if God was waiting with copies, he would have made color copies for that matter. Mm. But it pleases him that each one of us must have a personal experience of what he has to offer for them as an individual. God is not into mass production. God is looking for individuals. That is why he could hear Bartimaeus in the midst of that noisy crowd because just like he did with Zacchaeus, he, was, he came that way because he was looking for a man in need and his name was Timaeus. And this morning he's looking for somebody in need in our midst and his name and her name is you, my Amen. brothers and sisters. Amen. It is up to you this morning. You can let it pass by. You can let him pass by. You can let the opportunity pass by. Or you can walk up to him. Record says he took off his garment and then jumped up and ran to Jesus in his blindness. He didn't need no escort. He knew because of his sight he could tell where Jesus is located. And because of his capacity to hear rather. He then made his way to where he last had that whispering sound of Jesus yeah. when he said call him. He just dashed towards that direction and bowed before Jesus and Jesus asked him a question. As if he did not know it needed to come from his heart. It needed to come from his lips. It needed for him to hear Jesus' question because Jesus had given him the hearing capacity, the speaking capacity, and the thinking capacity. He must speak out. He must make the choice to be healed. Mm. What do you want me to do for you? Mm. Just like his style is. Yes, no complete sentences that I may see. That I may see. Mm. Oh, that I may see. Mm. And Jesus says, you can go now. Mm. You can go now. Because you have received the desire of your heart to pay. Mm. What is it mm. that you and I need to receive hey, today at this hour? Mm. 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 It is yours. For the asking. If I matter, if the people around you matter, that's what it's going to be. You shall not receive. There's a time to make a deal with Jesus. You know it. You've been postponing it. This is the day. The Lord has made it for you. This is the day. You can receive it's yours for the asking. And I plead to God that He may persuade each one of us to grab the opportunity to yield to His grace 